Good morning, I'm Brother Lamar Tedford. I'm bringing you greetings from Amazing Grace Missionary Baptist Church, where I pastor Curtis Wooten Sr. and our first lady, Brenda Wooten. Uh, our church motto is, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, I'll be bringing you scripture reading from Revelation chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and Omega, and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Now we'll bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father God, we just like to come to you today, Lord. Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for our health and strength. Thank you for our uh, healing the sick. Lord, thank you for traveling grace, food on the table, and closing our back, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for a peace of mind. And Lord, we want to ask you to heal all over, over the city. Lord, we just want to ask you to bless our pastor and our first lady. Lord, bless our uh, church family. Bless our immediate family, Lord. Bless the uh, kids in the school, Lord. Lord, uh, we just uh, asking these things in Jesus' name. I pray, amen. Good morning. It is, it is indeed a blessing to be in the house of the Lord once again. I want to thank Pastor Luna for another opportunity to be able to bring you the message today. I am Minister Tepper. And if you will give me a few minutes, I'm going to give you what God has given me. Heavenly Father, we come right now, God, as long as we know how, God. Heavenly Father, we come right now ask you to forgive us for any sins, God, that we have, may have committed, God. Heavenly Father, we want to come being thankful, God. Being thankful that you let us here on top of the ground, Heavenly Father, and the ground not on top of us, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we want to come saying thank you, God, for all the things that you have done for us, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, for waking us up and giving us food to eat, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, right now, we come right now, God, asking you to just touch all over the land, Heavenly Father. We ask you to touch Pastor Wooten and First Lady Wooten, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we ask you to touch our amazing Grace Church family, Heavenly Father. But Heavenly Father, I ask you to just touch your people all over the world, Heavenly Father. We ask you to touch the bereaved family right now, God. Heavenly Father, we ask you to give them strength, God. God, I ask that you just remove me out of the way, Heavenly Father, so that I can give the words you have given me, Heavenly Father. And I ask that you open up the ears so they can get the message that you gave, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you for all that you have done and all that you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to talk to you from Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. And it reads, And he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger, son, the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of good that, that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey, until a far country, and there wasted his substance with righteous living. And we had spent all there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he want, he went and joined himself to a sit to a citizen of that country, and he sent him unto his field to feed swine. And he would fain have, have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck 
and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said unto his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither, hither the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they, they began to be merry. Now his, older, now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. He answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years go, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress. I at any time thy commanded, and yet Thou never gave me a kid that I might have, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was me that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is now found. If you give me a few moments of your time, I want to talk about I once was lost, but now I'm found. So this story is a very interesting story. It's a story that we all may have heard of. And I'm pretty sure when we were younger, we heard it and we thought different thoughts. But as I read this text and these scriptures, I saw that there were three characters in this story. The three characters are the youngest son, which he realized he was lost and he knew he was lost. And then there's the father. The father that's loving and caring and forgiving like our father in heaven. Then there's the elder son, the older brother that was lost and really didn't even know he was lost. I'm pretty sure all of us have been in this predicament. Either we were lost and we knew we were lost, or we had no clue in the world that we were lost. So let's talk about the youngest son who was lost and knew he was lost. See, that son went and he asked his father for his portion of everything that he had after he had passed, even though the father was still yet alive. See, that son got everything that he wanted. The father just said, okay, and he divided everything evenly. He gave it to him and he gave the other son, his portion. The son went off and he left and 
he spent everything that he had, every dime he had was gone. He spent it on things that he thought he wanted, that he thought he needed. And see, some of us are like that now, or were like that. When we left home for the first time and we had everything that we thought we had and we weren't going to need mom and we weren't going to need daddy because we had everything. We was working it so we can provide for ourselves. So, we left home and we got out there on our own and like the younger son, we had our fun. Some of us did this and some of us did this and some of the stuff that we were doing wasn't even pleasing to our family or God. But to us at that point, we didn't, it didn't matter because we were just like the younger son, we were lost. Then we had to get to our senses and we came back to our senses and we had to sit down and understand that even though I left home, it ain't as bad as it was or bad as I thought it was at home. See, when I was at home, mama and daddy was cooking the meals and washing the clothes and taking care of me. But then you get out on your own and now you got to take care of yourself. You got to wash your own clothes. You got to feed yourself. You got to go to work. And see, this son had got out there with his so-called friends and was living it up, as we, as we would say, having a good old time. And then he lost or spent everything he had. And he found himself hungry. A famine had came over the land and he had to go and become a servant himself because he needed food and he needed money. So he went and became a servant for somebody else. He was feeding hogs. That's the lowest job you could have. Taking care of pigs. And he was so hungry that he wanted to eat what the pigs was eating. And so he had to sit down and think about it. Man, when I was back at home, I didn't have these troubles that I have now. I could eat what I wanted to eat. I could dress like I wanted to dress because my parents were providing for me. But here I am, out here in this faraway country, and I don't have anything. And I know for a fact that my father's hired servants are doing way better than I am now. I know they well off enough to be able to spare some for me. So he came to his senses and he realized that he was lost. And he went back home to his father. The father was a loving, caring man that cared about his children. The father didn't care that the son had left and did this and did that. The father only cared that his son had found his way back home. The, son, the father understood that the son still needed him. See, that's just like God. He our heavenly father. And sometimes we don't understand because we're lost that we really do need him. So we find ourselves in a predicament where we hit rock bottom like the younger, the younger son. And 
Sometimes we start to wallow in our self-pity instead of talking to our Heavenly Father, the one that's loving, the one that's caring, the one that when we go back, even though we done did this and we done did that, he's still there with his arms open wide. See, that's, that's how the father was to his son. He didn't care that he had sin. He didn't care that he had did some stuff that he shouldn't have did. He didn't care about the fact that he was out there feeding hogs and in the hall. He didn't care about that. His main priority was his son coming back home. And this is how God is with us. We be lost and we don't understand that we really need God. And then it's like a light bulb go off in our head. And we understand that we need somebody higher than we are. We understand that we need somebody and somebody has the power to protect us. We have to understand that God is there with his arms open wide. We have to understand that the way the father in the story ran to his son. That's how God is with us. Yeah, we might not have did what we were supposed to do. Yeah, it might have been some problems back where we were at. We might have left that place and thought we had a better life on the outside. But then our light bulb go off and we understand God has been there. I might couldn't see him. I might couldn't trace him. But he was there all alone. Just like the father was for his son. And then you have the older brother. He was lost. And really didn't realize that he was lost. He told his father, Father, I have been here. I never left you. Now one time. I've been working in the fields every day. I've been doing what you want me to do every day. But you hadn't killed a kid for me. But my brother that spent every dime he had after doing God knows what. And because he came back, you having a party, you having a feast on his behalf. But I can only imagine the, son, the older son feeling like, so what you, what you mean, Dad? I've been here, I ain't never left you. Everything you wanted me to do, I did it. But my brother disobeyed, disappointed you, left, and you killed the fattest calf for him. You gave him a nice robe. You put shoes on his feet. You put a ring on his finger. And he just disappointed you. And the father was telling the son, older son, don't feel like this, son. You ought to be happy that your brother is back. And see, I'm so glad that God sent me an older brother. Because see, at one point in my life, I have been in the same exact place as the younger brother. I've been in the same place as the older brother. And just like the younger brother and the older brother, I had a good father who was standing there waiting on me with his arms open wide. See, he sent a brother, an older brother, just for me. And I'm glad my brother 
one like the older brother in his story. See, my brother came to look for me. My brother came and shook his hand. I said, come on, sis. You can do better than this. See, there's a thing about God. He sent us somebody that not only died for our sin, but he was happy to come and look for me. He was happy when I found my way back. See, this older brother in the story, he wasn't happy for his younger brother. But Jesus, he's happy for us. Because at one, the one point when we're lost and we find it, that's fine. That's good. But then you can go back and you can be sitting in a church house. You can think you got all your stuff together. But if God was to return today, you wouldn't go with him. Because like the older brother, you lost and don't even know it. But because God sent Jesus to come down on this earth, to walk on land and to die for our sin. Not just my sins, but your sins as well. See, I find myself getting happy. And I find myself in a good place. Because when I read this story, it helped me to understand. I was lost and I found God. So I started doing things the right way. But then I ended up like the older brother. I was lost and didn't realize I was lost because I thought I had everything to go. Because I was going to church on Sunday. I was going to Bible study. I was going to Sunday school. So I thought I had everything to go. All but to be kept by a good father. And have a good brother that will come to the rescue. See, all of us need that brother called Jesus. That brother that died for your sin and mine. That brother that was on that cross. That got beat day in. And got beat at night. That brother that's there. When you think you alone. That brother that could have came down off that cross. But did not. That brother that died for our sin. I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for that brother not being like the brother in the store. And because my brother was not like the brother in the store, I didn't have access to the tree of life. After I leave here, I can go to a better place. I can go be with God. Because of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. I don't know about you today, but I can be honest. And I can tell you, I was lost. But now I'm found. I struggle, but look where I am today. Am I standing here telling you I have everything together? No. 
But I'm telling you, because of Jesus dying for me, I have a chance to try to get it right. See, that's the thing about it. We can fall, but our Heavenly Father is still there. All you have to do is accept Jesus. Ask for forgiveness. And start to live your life the way God intended for you to do. Is it going to be easy? No. I can't tell you that it's going to be easy. But is it worth it? Is it necessary? Yes. Because I rather much go where my father is than to burn for eternity. I thank God for coming and saving me. I thank God for not taking me out when I was in my room and not even knowing I was lost. I once was lost, but now I'm found. And that's what the, that's what the father told to the son. Be excited for your brother because he was once lost. He was lost, but now he's found. I want to thank God for salvation, and I want to thank him for his grace and mercy. God bless and understand that just because you once was lost don't mean you always have to be lost. You can always find your way back to the one and only.